this November 16, 2015, regular meeting number eight of the Fairfax County School Board will now come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, a moment of silence, and the performance of the national anthem by the Franklin Middle School eighth grade women's chorus under the direction of Naomi Schick. And we will be keeping in mind uh, the events of the past week as in our moment of silence. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you, parents, for sharing your talented students with us tonight. Uh, Madam Chair, we have the principal from Franklin Middle School here tonight, too, Sharon Eisenberg. Thank you, Sharon. And congratulations. Your students were wonderful. Okay. Um, item 1.02, Certification of Closed Meeting Compliance. In order to comply with Section 2.23712D of the Code of Virginia, it's necessary for the Board to certify that since the Fairfax County School Board convened a closed meeting on November 16, 2015, to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the Board during the closed meeting. Do I have a motion? Uh, moved by Ms. Evans, seconded by Ms. Smith. All those in favor? It is unanimous. Uh, we have a couple of uh, board members not here tonight. Um, uh, Ms. Reed will be out tonight. She is uh, traveling for family, and Mrs. Schultz is absent this evening. Uh, she's home, not feeling well. Um, okay, item 1.03, announcements. Uh, if you would like to review a copy of the agenda and any agenda item that is being discussed tonight, that information is on the table by the auditorium entrance. You may access tonight's agenda and related meeting documents by going to the FCPS website, select school board, and then upcoming meetings and agendas. The meeting is also being streamed live on the FCPS website homepage. Click on Watch School Board Live. Please turn off or silence your cell phones. I will now call on Mr. Press for announcements. Thank you, Madam Chair. The board will be recognizing National Inclusive School Week uh, from December 11th, uh, pardon me, December 7th through 11th. Inclusive Schools Week is an annual event sponsored by the In Inclusive Schools Network and is held during the first full week of December. This year's theme is Sharing Our Gifts in Inclusive Schools, which spotlights the many gifts schools and students receive when we open our schools and classrooms to inclusion. Since its inception in 2001, Inclusion, uh, Inclusive Schools Week has celebrated the progress that schools have made in providing a supportive and quality education to an increasingly diverse student population, 
including students who are marginalized due to disability, gender, socioeconomic status, cultural heritage, language preference, and other factors. The week also provides an important opportunity for educators, students, and parents to discuss what else needs to be done in order to ensure that their, uh, their schools continue to improve their ability to successfully educate all children. Thank you, Mr. Price. Item 1.04, we have a special recognition tonight for the Chamber of Commerce for their support of the school system. If we have any Chamber of Commerce members in the audience, would you mind um, standing up by the lectern there? We would like to honor you for just a few minutes. I call on Mr. McElvey. And actually, I would like to invite all members of the bond committee up to the lectern, along with uh, Mr. Corcoran and Mr. Vitalich. And we do want to thank both of them for, their, for spearheading this, this work over this past year. So I'm going to be reading the resolution. Um, and when we're done, we are going to be um, taking a group photo. This is the resolution honoring the 2015 Citizens Bond Committee. Whereas the Citizens for Better Schools and Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce contribute to high quality education in Fairfax County, and whereas citizens and local businesses play a crucial role in supporting our schools, and whereas the economic health of our community, state, and nation depends on a strong public school system, and whereas collaboration between local public schools and community alike provides a well-trained and highly educated workforce, and whereas an excellent public school system is vital to the quality of life in this community, and fundamental to preserving a strong democratic society now and in the future. And whereas first in class educational and instructional facilities are required to teach students to think critically and hone workforce skills. And whereas members of the Citizens for Better Schools Committee led by Chairman Lynn Forkus and Fairfax County Chamber of Commerce employees led by Joe Vitalich have dedicated their time, energy, and resources in support of passage of the $310 million bond, school bond referendum with 73% of the county's voters voting yes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Fairfax County School Board extends its highest commendation and deepest appreciation to the committee and the chamber on this occasion for their leadership and outstanding service to Fairfax County Public Schools and unwavering dedication to the children of this community. Your work has aided this community in focusing on the goal of providing the best public schools we can, can for every child who attends them. I so move. Is there a second? Mr. Moon seconds. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much for your support of our school bond issues this year. Uh, time for and, Right, and now I would like all members of the school bond committee to um, come forward for a group photo with the school board. Okay, item 2.01, citizen participation. Speakers are requested to limit their remarks to not more than three minutes. The school board will not hear statements involving issues that have been scheduled for public hearings, such as capital improvement program, budget and boundaries, or personal attacks on any person. Complaints regarding individual students or school-based employees should be directed to the appropriate school principal or other school official. If the concern is a group concern, please consider appointing a spokesperson, and while the spokesperson is speaking, those in support may stand to show their support. Tonight, 
we have four citizens signed up to speak. Um, the first is Ms. Amy Riddick, to be followed by Michael Dennis. Amy Riddick? Okay, well, maybe, maybe she'll come a little bit later. Um, Michael Dennis, to be followed by Kalpana Sivanandan. Good evening. I'd like to talk to you about the school calendar for just a moment. I know there's no perfect calendar. Every year I've worked here, there's been some little thing that you just wish would be a little different, but there's two issues that I emailed you all about this afternoon that I think uh, one could be fixed easily. One is more of a challenge, but is very important. The easier one to fix is the difference in the length between the third and fourth quarters, which I think can be fixed fairly easily, and I emailed you an idea for how to do that. The more important issue is the, the school planning day that's been scheduled for a Friday in August. This is a significant issue for a lot of employees. I couldn't do a scientific study, but I showed the calendar to 15 of my coworkers. I could not find one who thought it was a good idea. And that said something to me. We need our summers to work because we need to make more money. And some of us work jobs that are scheduled by the week, doing camp counseling and things like that. Taking one day to go to work on a Friday is a whole week of lost wages for that person. Some of us want to take classes to improve our skills as teachers, but those classes usually last for a week. Taking one day as a work day is a class you can't attend because you'd have to leave early. I think it's important that we try to find another way to get that workday scheduled. For myself, I work in a very transient neighborhood. I don't even know what I would do with that day because at that time, we don't have class lists yet. We don't have a schedule yet because we don't know how many students we'll even have. I would rather have that time to plan after I know what I'm working with, after the school year has gotten going, would be a lot more useful to me than another day in August. Um, that's the gist of my remarks, and I emailed you more details. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. Kalpana um, Sivanandan. Hello, my name is Tarun Sivanandan. Hello, my name is Tarun Savanandan, and I am a seventh grader here at Luther Jackson Middle School. Hello, my name is Drew Sundaraman, and I'm a seventh grader at Luther Jackson Middle School. Hello, my name is Pesanthi Gunasekra, and I'm a student at Mosby Woods Elementary School. Hello, I'm Ayush Sundaraman, and I'm a sixth grader at Mosby Woods Elementary School. We are the FLL Quintrobots team, the First Cycle League, and this year our challenge was called Trash Trek. And uh, we have to come up with a pro we had a problem, which was how to make less trash. We realized that kids and people around us in our community did not know how to recycle properly. And so we wanted to implement a lesson plan with two units of study into the curriculum. Um, the two units of study were going to be how to make less trash and how to find the difference between trashing items and recyclable items. And we noticed that students in elementary schools, they're not being taught about like recycling items, in, they're not being taught about recycling items and how to dispose items properly. We looked over many ways that we could teach kids, but we realized it had to be a fun and engaging solution. So our fun and engaging lesson plan includes uh, games, which are parodies of things that are known to kids, and uh, songs that will like help engage the kids. Um, we, with the games, we're gonna use them to implement. To we want those games to be implemented into the, into the curriculum, so kids will actually be taught about how to make less trash when as they grow up. As it will result in a healthier uh, world. Um, this is why we are bringing this to you, the school board, because if we can get this implemented to the curriculum, we want to start with the younger generation because that will eventually provide um, a more healthy environment as they grow older because um, they're going to be the head of the generation in a few years. 
to add to that, a lot of kids remember what they learn. Like if you teach it to adults, they might adults they might not remember it, but kids they will probably remember what they learn. Yeah. Um, also, with research, we found out like it sticks to their heads more when if you learn something right when you start, like when you're younger, you tend to remember that as you grow older. Uh, thank you. Excellent work, excellent work, and thank you for sharing that tonight. I'm going to give you guys one more assignment, okay? What I'd like you to do, please, is to email the school board with a summary or whatever report or whatever you have so that we can follow up on your good ideas, okay? So thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. It's very nice. Hey, um, John and William DeLong to speak. Hello, good evening. My name is William DeLong and I attend George C. Marshall High School. We come to you this evening to ask for your consideration of our proposal to allow sailing to be recognized as a sport by the athletic department of George C. Marshall High School. We have introduced this proposal to, um, to the staff of the deputy superintendent's office and discussed it with the office of risk management. We understand from them that recognizing the sport requires action from the school board. We anticipate that a sailing club or team could be instituted and managed with the cooperation and utilizing the resources of a local sailing club, DC Sail, which is located on the Potomac River. Competitive sailing in the US is organized under the US Sailing Association, which sanctions sailing centers there are currently 26 centers, one of which is DC Sail. This organization sponsors sailing activities, including instruction and competition. Its mission is to promote educational, recreational, and competitive sailing programs in a safe environment while fostering the Corinthian values of self-respect, sportsmanship, teamwork, community spirit, and service. It is organized as a 501c3, insured, and employs professional staff. The program is for high school students, um, has been operation in, for eight years, and attracts between 80 and 90 students from 28 local, public, and private high schools. The programs are held in both fall and spring. I have been competing at DC Sail as an individual, non-affiliated sailor but would like to recruit my fellow students to join me and form a club or team for my school, which would be able to compete against the other clubs or teams formed by other schools in the area. I would also like to gain recognition of my commitment and achievements from the sport at my school. We do not anticipate that recognition of the club would require any financial commitment or any other substantive resources, for example, staff. We note that crew, or rowing, is recognized as a club or team sport by the Fairfax County's public school system, and we seek a similar status for sailing. We expect to have further discussions with the Office of the Deputy Superintendent and other interested parties, and appreciate your consideration of our request. We are available to address any questions or concerns that you might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent job as well. So nice to see our students here tonight doing such a great job of communicating. And I do want to apologize. Um, the students who spoke to us a minute ago actually gave us some information. So we already have that. So we will look at it. Um, thank you. I should read what's right in front of me, right? So thank you. Um, all right. Uh, we had one speaker who was not here at the beginning, um, Amy Riddick. No? Okay. Item 2.02, student representative matters. I call on Mr. Pretz. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know how I can follow those guys up. Wasn't that impressive? Uh, before I begin tonight, I'd like to recognize a few Boy Scouts we have in the audience. Uh, we have Jordan Marion and William Clausen, both here working on their citizenship in the community merit badges. If you guys just stand up so we can recognize you. Thank you for being here tonight.
I'd like to begin my remarks with a few thank yous. First off, to Dr. Garza for hosting such a wonderful business roundtable this past Tuesday, and to the students and staff of Mount Vernon High School who made the environment just so welcoming. Uh, I was joined there by Mr. Stork and Ms. McLaughlin. We just had an excellent time engaging with the uh, 10 largest employers in the county to hear their, their take on some of the goings on in FCPS. I'd also like to thank Mr. McElveen for hosting his annual student advocacy workshop this past Friday. Uh, we had a great turnout of students from across the county to discuss issues that were important to them and giving them the resources that they needed to effectively self-advocate. So uh, very important work there. I'd also like to mention some of the uh, incredible things that I've, I've seen around FCPS as we begin our fall performances for many of our performing arts programs. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to attend uh, a couple of plays around the county. I look forward to, doing, uh, to attending a few more. I encourage board members and members of the community to get out there and attend one of these programs. They are absolutely phenomenal and the talent of our students is just beyond belief. Uh, moving on to the issues, I'd like to speak briefly tonight on the calendar. Uh, we had, for members of the public, we had a, a work session uh, last week uh, around the calendar and I'd like to remind and encourage the board and staff to continue to have a robust discussion around the calendar. It's a very important, uh, important thing. And I would also encourage the board to evaluate ways that we can work to mitigate student stress and preserve student mental health as we continue those calendar discussions. Uh, that really includes finding ways to even out quarter lengths. When quarters are too long or too short, we find that student stress becomes a major challenge. And working to find ways to, uh, to, to build quarters in uh, with, with breaks. Again, staff's work on that has been incredible. I look forward to continuing that discussion as we move forward. Uh, for the record, uh, the Budget Task Force presented their findings to us uh, at a work session last week, and I'd like to highlight, particularly to students, but all members of the public, that budget advocacy opportunities are still very much out there. Uh, I would encourage uh, students to, to speak with me and your local uh, school board member uh, to uh, give your feedback on the budget. I'd also like to, to mention that the budget tool will still be open for members of the public to give their feedback. Uh, and lastly, uh, on, on some of the work that we're doing, uh, I'd like to re-advertise uh, the mental health task force that we're putting together with student stakeholders from around the county. Uh, that group will be really working on in-school factors and discussing best practices to form them into policy and regulation recommendations that we can use to make FCPS a better place. So if there are any students out there uh, who are interested or you feel like you might know someone who would be interested, uh, please reach out to me. My uh, contact information can be found on the FCPS website. Looking forward, I'm pleased to, uh, to be joining the Student Advisory Council for their third meeting tomorrow at Robinson Secondary School. Uh, we're going to be having some important discussions um, the very early stages of our discussions around mental health and grading policy, two of the very important charges that the SAC has taken on for this year. I also look forward to attending the Virginia School Boards Association Conference in Williamsburg later this week and interacting with many of my peers from around the state. Uh, and I wish all students and staff a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Press. As always, an excellent report. Um, I wanted to, before we move on, I want to go ahead and recognize we have some school board members elect in the audience. These are uh, folks who will become school board members on January 1st. I see Dahlia Palchik, if you'd just raise your hand. Um, and Karen Corbett Sanders, next to her. And am I missing anyone? Mr. Wilson, is that you in the back? Oh, Tom Wilson, there you go. Thank you. Good to see you. Um, Okay, item 3.01, confirmation of action taken in closed meeting. This is the portion of the meeting where the board will confirm any action regarding issues that were discussed in the closed meeting. These issues may include action taken regarding student disciplinary matters. Uh, board members have discussed each individual case and at this time we'll make two motions to confirm the recommended action. I call on Mr. Moon for a motion. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I move to excuse from attendance at school a certain student identified in closed meeting pursuant to Virginia Code Section 22.1-254-B1. Is there a second? Okay, seconded by Ms. Smith. All those in favor? Okay. Um, Ms. Darnat Koufax, Mr. McElveen, Ms. Smith, Ms. Strauss, Mr. Stork, Ms. Evans, Hines, Moon, those opposed? Mr. Belkoff, those abstaining? Um, Ms. McLaughlin, thank you. 
that motion carries. Uh, I call on Ms. Strauss. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I move to deny the school reassignment appeal of a student who sexually harassed another student at school and to confirm the disciplinary decision of the division superintendent. Second. Seconded by Ms. Smith. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, that is Ms. Derenak Koufax, Mr. McElvain, Ms. Smith, Ms. Strauss, Mr. Stork, Ms. Evans, Hines, Moon, and Velkoff. Those opposed? Those abstaining? Ms. McLaughlin, the motion carries. Okay. Item 3.02. This is an action item. We will be voting on this. Um, uh, this is to vote on the division wide comprehensive plan. I call on Mr. Moon to make the motion. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the school board approve the division wide comprehensive plan as detailed in the agenda item. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Strauss. Do you, want to ha do you have any comments, Mr. Moon? Uh, just briefly. Uh, the standard six in the Virginia Standards of Quality requires each local school board to adopt biennially a division wide comprehensive plan. Our September 2015 division wide comprehensive plan meets the standard six requirements and includes pertinent data from the 2000, FY 2015 Student Achievement Goal Monitoring Report, which highlights academics, essential life skills, and responsibility to community. Uh, the plan also includes additional information related to enrollment projections, technology, parent involvement, and cooperation with the neighboring school divisions. A public hearing regarding the division-wide comprehensive plan was held on November 5, 2015, as required. Thank you. Any, any other comments? Okay, seeing none, um, the motion is to approve the division-wide Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. McLaughlin, I missed you. I just was thinking this would still be worthwhile if maybe Dr. Garza could provide just a brief summary for the audience who's watching us vote on something that's uh, 68 pages long, but it just might be nice if the uh, audience just had a sense of, you know, why Virginia asks us to speak to this or someone on your team who, who prepared it for us to be voting on. Well, unfortunately, we had uh, Dan Paris here for the last two meetings to be able to provide those technical questions. And I, we probably could give you a brief synopsis uh, if we had to. I will tell you that uh, this is a compliance-oriented plan. Uh, it is lagging data, so that's why I think there was a member of the public that said that they, they felt like it should be more accurate and up-to-date information. It's designed specifically uh, to ask for that information. However, we also pointed out in the future, we believe that this could be integrated into our uh, future strategic planning reports so that it's not multi different, uh, separate and, and apart from uh, the other work that's going on in the division. So uh, in my estimation, moving uh, ahead, this is required every other year by every um, division throughout the Commonwealth. Um, and so it is a compliance kind of oriented um, you know, piece of work. But in the future, I think we can integrate it and make it much more meaningful uh, in the future. Uh, I mean, that may be inadequate for your purposes. Um, Steve, you wanna help me or someone, Dr. Lockhart? No, Dr. Garza, I think you um, summed it up as I would have. It is a compliance uh, component. Um, Mr. Paris uh, did that work for us in gathering that data. It is lagging data, as you said. So we're not necessarily reporting anything new. It's nothing that hasn't been reported probably to the school board in some other fashion and some other report for the state's purposes. Uh, also what Dr. Garza uh, said is correct. Um, and we outlined this in the, in the uh, narrative of the comprehensive uh, plan. We do intend to um, use our strategic plan as sort of the planning guide moving forward uh, now we still will have to report some, some lagging data because it is a every two year uh, a report, uh, but it'll look more similar to how we're reporting things, I believe, in the future. No, I, I appreciate that very much. I just, uh, it, I think that the report itself does just provide um, not just compliance for um, this, the Commonwealth of Virginia, but that it does provide in the 68 pages just uh, a comprehensive sense of the division itself. And uh, I, Dr. Garza, I very much agree with you that when you look at um, our uh, fantastic efforts to develop our own strategic plan, which is more meaningful to Fairfax County Public Schools, 
but this is just still something I think that helps the public to realize that if you ever were wanting to look at sort of a snapshot of testing in one spot and, and really understanding the, the division and its efforts as a whole, it's just it's another document that people might find interesting um, to uh, review. And so I didn't mean to put anybody on the spot. I, I didn't want any specific details, but just more of helping everybody understand. So what is it they're voting on right now? And what, what relevance does it have? And, and I think hopefully people will actually take an opportunity to look at it and, and, uh, and then realize that we've gone one step further with the strategic plan to make it even more meaningful to the work we're trying to do here in strengthening the public schools. And to your question, if I think if members of the public were interested in what's contained within, it is a lengthy document, uh, but there, I think there's a really good outline that's been done. Um, so if you look at the table of contents, you'll see it talks about uh, academic performance, essential life skills, certainly responsibility to the community, which were our, our major student achievement goals. Uh, there's enrollment projections. There's a whole section on forecast of enrollment and managing enrollment change. And now my computer's not cooperating. Um, then there's a whole section on uh, certainly the capital improvement. Um, and I swear my screen just went black on top of what I was looking at. Uh, but there's a whole section also on parent engagement and parent involvement efforts. So there's a lot of comprehens comprehensive um, information included within the, within the document. Okay. So recommended reading. Um, However, the data ends with 1314. That's when they mean by lagging document. Right, the so data is for 2013 14 school year. It, it okay. ends with 1314, right? So it is gotcha. old information. Gotcha. All right, any other comments? Seeing none, um, the motion is to uh, approve the division wide comprehensive plan as detailed in the agenda item. All those in favor, raise your hand, please. That is unanimous. Thank you. Item 3.03, um, strategic plan, goal three, premier workforce. I call on Mr. Velkoff for the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the board accept the strategic plan goal three, premier workforce report as defined in the agenda item. Do I have a second? Seconded by Ms. Mrs. Derenak Kofax, thank you. Would you like to speak to your motion, Mr. Velkoff? Yes, I would very briefly. Three, two, one, ignite. We have liftoff. <laughs> you can tell I grew up in the 60s watching all those rockets take off from what we called Cape, well, we called it Cape Canaveral, and then we called it Cape Kennedy, and then Cape Canaveral. Anyway, um, I feel like we're seeing the payoff already. Um, just in when I, when I think about the discussion we had uh, in new business and the discussion that we had during the work session, I feel like the information that's been presented to us, Dr. Garza, is helping us um, understand better on where we should be focusing and what questions we should be asking. So I, I just want to express my, my gratitude uh, for having led us through the process of uh, achieving IGNITE, and uh, I have very high hopes for how this is going to help the board going forward as, um, as we go into in the next, the rest of the decade. Ms. Darren Kofax, did you want to speak to your second? No? Okay. Um, yeah, Dr. Garza, do you want to add something? Yes, I do want to compliment the staff. Our team worked very, very hard. This was the first report, um, you know, right after we adopted the plan. And so I think they did a really good job of, of setting the mark really high. Um, but I do think not only will it help the board, as you pointed out, Mr. Velkoff, but I do think it will also help the public find the information that they need about what we're reporting out on, the progress we're making on our strategic plan. So um, I thought it was, I thought our team did a, a really fine job. I was very proud of the work and we'll continue to strengthen it and uh, making it as meaningful as possible. But I, I do think it was a, a great start and I think the conversations that the board has had both at new, as new business and then at the work session, I thought were very was very in depth, and and I would encourage members of the public to go look at all that wealth of information that was presented at the work session um, last. I think it was last Monday. Uh, there was a lot of important uh, and meaningful information that was tied to this report as well as some other reports. So thank you. Okay, Miss Evans. And I just want to. Um, 
uh, say that this this is an excellent report. It, it, the fact that it's the first one, and uh, w this is our, our first report for our strategic plan, and uh, of course we feel that that gives us a pathway. So even though we're not having a big debate on this tonight, I, you know, we're not having a lot of comments. We did have a work session. This is going to give us, this is an important document. It's, yes, and it's, it's, this is something that we will refer back to time and time again, I'm sure, as we deliberate on policy issues. So um, the fact that we're not having a, a, a big debate on this is not a reflection on um, the importance because it is highly important. Um, uh, Mr. Strauss? And this is current information. <laughs> this is current data so that it is an, it is an actual um, good reflection of what is uh, as, to, as to right now. So thank you. Sorry, Ms. McLaughlin? Uh, as I have shared over the years on the board, um, some of my concerns that the uh, prior monitoring reports uh, were uh, extremely dense, but not necessarily filled with, uh, in my mind, the most high impact um, mission critical information. And I do want to join my colleagues in expressing my appreciation to Dr. Garza and her leadership team uh, that this is what it means to have a strategic plan with a focus and to uh, be presented with this one on the premier workforce, which we know uh, is absolutely critical to the strength of our public schools. Uh, it's very encouraging to see the direction um, under Dr. Garza's leadership uh, that we are uh, having reports such as this and that the leadership team has worked so hard to find uh, those most uh, substantive metrics to, again, help this board and help Dr. Garza uh, address um, the most important needs of our system. So I'm very pleased to be voting in support of uh, this report and uh, do feel like this is uh, just encouraging uh, for the work we're going to continue to be doing. And so my thanks to Dr. Garza and her team. Mrs. Strauss? One quick update since I see somebody in the, in, the, in the audience here from my community. One of the interesting pieces, there was a class size update because that was a, a great concern among many of our schools. And in this report, it indicates that 107.5 teacher and instructional assistant positions were ad allocated to address large class sizes as of October and $6.5 million spent on this uh, initiative. So that was very interesting news. We worked hard to do that. Uh, Mr. Belkoff. Uh, since Dr. Garza mentioned the value of the report to the community, uh, since we so generously uh, recognize the Chamber of Commerce tonight, uh, I have great confidence that they will read these um, reports uh, cover to cover and they will find that all of their questions are answered. I certainly hope so. This is highly recommended reading, right? And um, as was mentioned, it, it's easiest to find our past meetings if you have the date. That's one thing that we've discovered. So for those who were listening and interested, this was presented as new business on November 5th at our regular meeting. And then we discussed it at the work session on November 9th. So that's where to go on, on board docs to find more information about this. Um, any other conversation? No, seeing none, um, the motion is to accept the Strategic Plan Goal 3 Premier Workforce Report as defined in the agenda item. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Okay, item four, consent agenda. Our adopted rules of parliamentary procedure, Robert's rules, provide for a consent agenda, listing several items for approval of the board by a single motion. Many items listed have gone through board review and documentation has been provided to all board members and the public in advance. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member prior to the meeting. The items are 4.01, approve the minutes of November 5th, 2015 regular school board meeting. 4.02, award of contract, award a contract for the Bucknell Elementary School renovation project to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Keller Brothers Incorporated in the amount of $15,898,000 and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 
4.03 issuance of school bonds, adopt the resolution approving the 2016 sale of school bonds, and B, authorize the chairman or vice chairman with the advice of legal counsel for the school division to negotiate, execute, and administer the school board tax certificate and all other documents as are deemed appropriate and advisable, and to do all things necessary to complete the transaction uh, contemplated by the resolution as detailed in the agenda item. 4.04, award of contract, award the contract for the chiller replacement at Lee High School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Stingray Welding LLC, in the amount of $149,780, and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 4.05, award of contract, award the contract for the chiller replacement at Holmes Middle School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, Stingray Welding LLC, in the amount of $232,000. $700 and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 4.06, uh, award the contract for the chiller replacement at Fairview Elementary School to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, uh, Stingray Welding LLC in the amount of $160,800 and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 4.07, confirm the separations for the period beginning October 1, 2015 and ending October 31, 2015 as detailed in the agenda item. 4.08, appoint individuals to serve on committees as detailed in the agenda item. Is there any objection to approving the consent agenda? Hearing and seeing no objection, the consent agenda is approved. Um, item five, new business. The following are new business agenda items. There will not be a vote tonight on these items, but action is scheduled at a future meeting. 5.01, the 2016-2017 school calendar. Approve the 2016-2017 standard school year calendar as detailed in the agenda item. 5.02, award of contract, chiller replacement at Drainsville Elementary School. Award the contract for the chiller replacement at Drainsville Elementary school to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder and authorize the division superintendent or the assistant superintendent of facilities and transportation services to execute and administer the contract on behalf of the school board. 5.03 2016 legislative program, accept staff recommendations for the Fairfax County School Board draft 2016 legislative program. And 5.04 school board committee assignments appoint budget chairman and vice chairman effective January 1, 2016. Uh, item 6.01, Superintendent Matters, I call on Dr. Garza. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, last week, the Budget Task Force presented to me their, their work on how to solve um, our projected budget deficit for fiscal year 2017, assuming we have to make some very, very difficult decisions of 50 to $75 million worth of cuts. I, I want to sincerely thank all of the members of the task force who put countless amount of countless numbers of hours uh, studying the facts, discussing the possibilities, and coming to a very difficult consensus and effort to produce a set of recommendations with some very challenging constraints. Um, I will say that, you know, it's so easy to crit be a critic. Uh, these are good people who, um, well, to a person, uh, did not necessarily enjoy the exercise uh, because it is very difficult for those people that have actually gone through the uh, budget tool, it's very difficult to come up with a list of 50 or $75 million of cuts. Um, so I'm, I'm indebted to our uh, task force as well as other members of the community who've been engaged in this process. These are difficult decisions we have before us. I know that we care about what the community has to say. The decisions are not made. We're far from making decisions. Um, in fact, January the 7th, when I present to the to the school board uh, my recommendations, um, then the um, then we'll see where we go from there. Um, but we need our community's input, engagement, and I think it illustrates the very very difficult decisions that we have before us. So I would encourage any member of the public who has angst about any one item on that list of cuts or considerations. I will tell you, we agree with you. And we should not be having this conversation, not in F Fairfax County Public Schools, some of the finest schools in the country. This is not the conversation uh, we should be uh, engaged in or having. Uh, we should be about continuing to build upon what's great about this wonderful school system. Uh, but I know that we all believe very much uh, the importance of the engagement of our community. So 
again, my hat's off to our task force. What two person, uh, very great people trying to help us in a very, very difficult uh, circumstance. Um, uh, the, um, many of you may know this, but uh, the Virginia Department of Education has declared that November is Family Involvement Month. And I'm always impressed with the level of involvement and engagement uh, that we have in our school system and around our schools. And I will tell you, I think that's a key piece of why our schools are so special and so great is because of the wonderful support that surrounds our schools. So uh, again, I wanna um, appreciate and send out our thanks to all of our families who devote so much time to supporting our wonderful schools, our great uh, employees, our wonderful teachers. Um, it, uh, you are important. Um, I also want to uh, compliment a, a wonderful orchestra teacher at Mount Vernon High School um, who received the James Madison University Outstanding Early Career Music Education uh, Award, and that's Anna Hennessy. The award is presented to a member of the JMU Music Education Alumni in their first five years of teaching and who exemplify JMU's commitment to music and pedagogy. So we're very uh, happy for Anna and Mount Vernon High School. Um, and uh, that concludes my, my comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Garza. Item 7.01, uh, board committee reports. I call on Mr. Velkoff for a report on the budget committee. Would you like me to come back to you, Mr. Velkoff? <laughs> Madam Chair, if you could, please. Sure, no appreciate problem. Um, I, then Mr. Moon for a report on the governance. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, governance Committee had a meeting, uh, a work session on November 10th, and there were a couple of topics. Uh, we had a, a planning discussion for the upcoming school board retreat. School board retreat is on December 12th. That will include duly elected school board members as well. And that a little more detail will be presented to the full board uh, for discussion at the a December work session, which is on December 7th. And we also began preliminary discussion on potential restructuring of a school board's standing committees and also advisory committees. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Velkoff? Yes, I just wanted to point out that uh, at the uh, bu budget work session, we had we had the presentation of Dr. Garza's uh, task force, and um, of course, we're all very grateful for the work as as she just uh, outlined, and um, it's going to be a very interesting budget year. So, uh, here we go. Um, Mr. McElvain, for a report on the work session. Thank you, Madam Chair. Last uh, Thursday night. What is tonight? Um, Last Thursday night, the board held a work session on our um, legislative program, uh, which my colleague, Ms. Dernat Koufax, will be shepherding this year. Um, and uh, there were several uh, minor tweaks to the program, but the board also discussed in more detail um, changes with regard to um, uh, gun stores and their location in reference to school buildings, um, in addition to some requirements for um, career and technical education uh, coursework. Uh, so those will come as amendments to that program. That evening, we also held a um, uh, HR work session on the school calendar um, with, and staff presented us options for both post-Labor Day starts and pre-Labor Day starts, and the board decided that we would eventually post um, both options for the community to review. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, item 8.01, board matters, where board members may make brief comments. Why don't we begin with Ms. Derenak Kofax. On Friday, I attended Fairfax Futures Leadership Forum, Building 21st Century Workforce Skills, Tapping into Technology. And it was a forum um, put on, and uh, it was basically premier uh, industry experts where they shared about how we can use technology with some of our younger students, um, shared best practices from the com around the community, and um, also talked quite a bit um, that I will be sharing, I will share with everybody at a later date or staff, about um, best practices around the community dealing with digital divide, which was interesting. Um, some new things that I had heard and, and, and seen. So um, that was it, and it was a great, um, day it was it was long it was from nine to one but the time went very quickly so that you always know you're at a great meeting when that happens thank you mr mcelvain 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Last weekend, I, uh, or I guess two weekends ago now, um, I uh, got to star, not star, have a mm -hmm. cameo in um, Woodson High School's production of Meet Me in St. Louis, um, in which I played a bad dancer, which was not very difficult for me, um, but that was enjoyable. Um, we all know that this past week brought us uh, Veterans Day. Um, Mr. Mood, Ms. Reed, and I, um, as always, uh, greatly enjoyed um, Flint Hill Elementary School's um, uh, performances. Uh, every year, they, they do it slightly differently and even better than the last. Uh, that same day, Mr. Moon and I um, represented the board, um, and I'm sure he will, he will speak to this as well, represented the board at the um, Librarian's Dinner, um, which is held annually. I'm sorry, more of our, our colleagues weren't able to join us because uh, we heard um, perhaps the best presentation I've ever heard in Fairfax County Public Schools by a librarian at Mantua Elementary um, who has written two children's books. Um, and she spoke on um, how um, this books serve both as a mirror and a window into people's lives and um, how we need to do a better job in our libraries and representing all of our students, not just those who happen to be, be in the books that we choose. Uh, and then finally, um, last Saturday night, Mr. Moon and I also were at the um, uh, artist teachers exhibition uh, which is held annually at the workhouse arts center mm -hmm. um, and it's um, that is going on through um, December 6th and I hope um, many of you can be there um, it's an opportunity for our teachers um, our, our art teachers who happen to be artists in their spare time to uh, display their work um, it's an adjudicated exhibition um, and perhaps what was most striking to me and I posted this on social media um, was a picture was a uh, wood woodblock print um, that was done you know months ago, um, but um, it was striking to me because um, it was it had um, an Eiffel Tower in uh, being held in someone's hand, um, and it's it was entitled "The World in Our Hands," and um, just the timing of that the opening of that exhibition that was very powerful. So I hope you all have a chance to go and see that. Thank you, Mr. Matthews and Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith is passing. Ms. Stroh. Thank you. I would like to congratulate the McLean High School Band Program. They, are, they have been recognized by the National Band Association for a Program of Excellence Award. Uh, to be considered for this award, the band director, Chris Weiss, and his students had to submit materials to show the band's history of success over the past four years. Um, yes, they had to submit performances, competition ratings, and scores from concert band ensembles, marching band, percussion ensemble, all district band, and all state band, jazz ensemble, solo ensemble, and guard. It is a comprehensive evaluation. Uh, so we congratulate them, and um, the program at McLean High School includes three concert bands, two jazz ensembles, three winter guards, two percussion ensembles, and the Highlander marching band. They all perform regularly win their competitions, so I heartily congratulate our hardworking students at McLean High School and Chris Weiss, their wonderful director. Good luck. I also uh, attended Oak Oakton High School's uh, performance of Treasure Island last weekend. It was great, we enjoyed it very much. And yes, we are in the fall theater season for almost all of our schools, so I encourage you to check out what's playing at your local high school theater. They are wonderful, thanks. Mr. Stork. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to echo Mr. Press's comments about um, Dr. Garza, Superintendent Round Table at Mount Vernon High School. I think it was, it was very well done. I learned a lot. I think I particularly enjoyed the interactions that we had and each of the comments that the members, the attendees made, I think that was a little bit broader than some of the other comments that were made, but I think it helped me to understand better kind of what they were doing and why they were there and what they were hoping to get out of the meeting. So thank you again for continuing to hold those around the county. And I want to thank my colleagues who attended, and regrettably there weren't as many as should have attended at the retirement ceremony uh, about a week ago. Uh, it is important that we honor the folks who have honored us by their work on our behalf. Um, it is always, to me, one of the most moving things that I do because I get a chance to, to meet the many teachers, principals, administrators, and, and frankly, many bus drivers, custodians, and others who have done so much for our students to make those bonds and and kind of create those relationships that, that we know is the key part of making school success for, for many of our kids. So um, it is an important occasion. I would urge my colleagues, um, if you 
have not attended or did not attend recently, then please make sure you attend the future ones. It is an important responsibility that I think you owe to the community as part of your election. Um, I had office hours this past Saturday. The, as you might expect, the theme of the hour, if you will, the hours, I had two different ones. I have two hours in, in Lorton Library and two hours at, uh, at the, uh, the, uh, the library at Sherwood Hall Lane. Uh, the budget was the key conversation point, as you might expect. Um, folks who are deeply concerned about that, what it means, how it will affect them. Um, again, the usual uh, Boy Scouts and other leaders wanting to come and ask questions, but it's, it's, I've always found it to be invaluable, and it's a, it's a group concern at this point, and, and I, I think Dr. Garza captured it with her comments earlier, is that we cannot maintain the quality system. In fact, we know the quality of our system isn't uh, getting maintained adequately at this point uh, because our funding is insufficient for the responsibilities and frankly the reputation that I think is essential for us to maintain for all of us, not only our students most importantly, but, but for all the residents of Fairfax County. So I'm, I'm adding my voice to that and I clearly hopefully will future add my vote to making sure that we have adequate resources for our schools and, and frankly provide the quality education that we all got when we were growing up but we want to make sure that we're giving the next generation a hand up to, to join us. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stork. That was just recorded. You know that, right? We're counting on you. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> we're we counting on you. Recorded? You, you, really? You, you, you <laughs> were oh, on I camera just when you, you said that, right? <laughs> Ms. Evan. Thank you. I want to say what a pleasure it was to help host uh, Department of Education Secretary Ann Holton, um, who uh, toured um, Bailey's Upper Elementary School. Uh, our first uh, vertical school, and uh, it was a pleasure to um, to have uh, have her with us and to have some conversations with uh, with our leaders. So I appreciate her coming um, coming here to talk with us. Um, and beyond that, I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to all people out there. Mr. Moon, thank you, Madam Chair. I absolutely want to echo what Mr. McElveen has said about the particular librarian from Manchu Elementary School. I know Mr. McElveen, you're just finishing up your first term, but I've been doing this for much longer. But I can tell you that, that sh her presentation was one of the best, if not the best, I ever heard as a school board member. And, and you know, those of you who, who missed this opportunity, if a superintendent could find a, a, an opportunity for not only the school board members, but senior leadership and, and building principals to be able to listen to this presentation, I would really encourage that. It was, you know, when she was talking about how we can connect with the students with a, a right selection of the books. You know, some of the books that she was talking about, that she was talking about me because she was connecting with me. At that time, it was, you know, giving that sort of a, a feeling to the you know, students in the classroom and the role of classroom teachers in selecting books and librarians and, and then building, you know, building administrators and also school system as a whole. Uh, I, mean, I hope that you know, some, of, you know, some of the senior leaders will talk to uh, this, this wonderful librarian and see whether we can bring her back. Ms. McLaughlin. I first want to um, echo comments shared by Mr. Stork about Superintendent Garza's uh, roundtable luncheon that was held at Mount Vernon. Uh, the food was outstanding. The students uh, at the Culinary Academy really uh, demonstrated to uh, everyone there about how amazing it is that we have these academies and what our students can accomplish. Uh, it was not only a delicious lunch, but uh, as Mr. Stork pointed out, uh, it was remarkable to hear uh, this particular roundtable, our largest businesses in Fairfax County. So we're talking Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Dominion Power, Washington Gas, Apple, Oracle, just to name some of them who were there. And to listen to them uh, really understand uh, what we're talking about in terms of the funding needs of our schools and to see how receptive they were when we provided them with some of the statistics. As employers, they understand that when our budget is 90% compensation driven and that our school system is trying to provide equal 
uh, compensation increases to match what the county's doing for their employees. I think it really resonated with them, and uh, we certainly left there uh, encouraging them that their voice is going to be needed in this conversation. Uh, it's also was very encouraging to hear all the things that they're doing to partner um, with our students in the schools, uh, the different things that they do to uh, really help um, support uh, learning and opportunities. Uh, and I do want to also express my appreciation to Jay Grant and Elizabeth Murphy, um, the foundation chairman who was also there. Uh, both of them clearly are doing uh, great work um, with our business community and uh, especially everything that Jay juggles with his uh, uh, workload. It was um, very evident. Uh, I also uh, wanted to just share with my colleagues that uh, I was invited to attend the Children's Science Center uh, Foundation Luncheon. Um, that was on Thursday, and uh, it was really uh, great to listen about the Children's Science Center's mobile labs. They come in and they benefit Fairfax County uh, schools, uh, as well as the other Northern Virginia school districts. And so being able to learn more about that and uh, also be there to uh, show that Fairfax County Schools uh, is in support of um, the work they're doing. It was, it was an enjoyable luncheon. Um, I will encourage uh, you all to just, if you get a chance, to look at the good work that they're doing. And uh, also, I wanted to just share how much I appreciated uh, my Braddock District PTA presidents and leaders who came out and met with me um, for my fall meeting to uh, get their thoughts about how things are going in, um, their, in the schools within my district. And there was probably about 12 to uh, 13 who came. And Dr. Garza, without question, their um, big concerns were recommendations that have come from the budget task force. And so as a result, um, it was, I think, very timely because I did try to explain to them that this is not where we want to be. Um, it, it really is about um, trying to uh, help the community understand uh, how important it is to get uh, the adequate funding and that uh, at, at some point as a school system, we will be at a, at a break point on how we can continue um, the programs and services that have defined us nationally. So uh, I encourage my colleagues, I think, uh, I'm sure many of you are reaching out and talking with your PTAs, but I definitely found that they appreciated um, that opportunity to really dialogue, not just with me, but with each other and, and talk about uh, those things. And because I have several robust immersion programs in Braddock District, uh, definitely was hearing a lot about the value and the need for um, protecting and preserving our immersion programs in Fairfax schools. Mr. Belcock? Pass. Okay. Um, so that comes back to me. And for those on incoming board members who might still be here, don't get any ideas that this is usually how short our meetings are because they are not. We are actually adjourned. <laughs>